How did Libya create the world's largest river right in the heart of the Sahara Desert? How did they manage this incredible feat in a place with no water at all? How were they able to transport millions of cubic meters of fresh water to such a dry region? This project was even hailed as the eighth wonder of the world. But what happened that caused it to fade from the spotlight? If Libya is seen even on a satellite map, not even a dot of greenery is visible. Rainfall is so rare that people do not see rain for many years. In this situation, how did Libya make all this possible? 99% of Libya's area is covered with desert. You must have guessed the heat here. This heat is so intense that even water kept in the open air evaporates immediately. In many parts of Libya, there is no sign of rain for 10 years. In terms of crude oil, Libya has more oil reserves than the United States. But in terms of fresh water, there is not a single natural river here. The story begins in 1953, when Libya was searching for oil but discovered something even more valuable an enormous underground reservoir of fossil water known as the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer. With an estimated 150,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water, this aquifer held the promise of revolutionizing Libya's water supply. Muammar Gaddafi did not want to miss this opportunity at any cost. He envisioned that extracting this water and distributing it to all the cities in Libya would be a monumental achievement in the history of Libya and the Sahara. However, while devising the plan was straightforward, executing it proved to be highly complex. Initial research revealed that the water was located in southern Libya, whereas the major cities were on the northern coast. A significant challenge emerged when they estimated that constructing an artificial river to transport the water to every city would require digging a 2,820 kilometer long channel. Furthermore, the Sahara's harsh environment posed another problem. During the summer, water in open-air canals would evaporate rapidly. Such a long, exposed river would result in more than half of the water evaporating before reaching the cities. To combat this issue, they decided the 2,820-kilometer long river had to be constructed underground. This required large pipes, each 13 feet in diameter and weighing 80 tons. They needed 500,000 of these pipes to complete the project. Consequently, numerous factories were established in Libya to manufacture these specialized pipes made of concrete and steel. Each pipe used 8 kilometers of steel wire. If all the steel wire used were laid out straight, it would circle the earth 100 times. In the 1980s, the large-scale manufacturing of pipes commenced. These pipes were loaded onto large trucks and transported. However, the problem was that there was no road network in Libya at that time. A South Korean company was called in to build 3,200-kilometer-long road in Phase 1. Once the road was completed, the digging work began because the pipes had to be buried 20 feet underground. In Phase 1, pipes were laid to Libya's second-largest city, Benghazi. Approximately 3 billion cubic feet of rubble and stones were excavated for this entire project. All the work done up to this point constituted phase one of this mega project, which cost around $5 billion. Phase two began in 1989. The first task was to lay water pipes to Tripoli, the capital and largest city of Libya. Two wells were dug at Jabal Hasuna, and water was pumped from a depth of about 200 meters. From there, pipes were laid to Tripoli, spanning a distance of 700 kilometers. In stage three, two wells were dug at Kufra and connected to pipes that were laid to Libya's second largest city, Benghazi, covering 1,000 kilometers. Five large reservoirs were also built as part of Libya's great man-made river project to store excess water. The diameter of each reservoir was one kilometer. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this project is not only the world's largest man-made river, but also the world's largest irrigation system. 
This project began delivering water in 1989, starting with the Ajdabiya Reservoir, Grand Omar Mukhtar Reservoir in 1989, the Ghardabiya Reservoir in 1991, Tripoli in 1996, and Garyan in 2007. Gaddafi's regime faced international isolation, limiting foreign investment and expertise. This isolation aligned with Gaddafi's nationalist ideals, symbolizing Libya's self-sufficiency. Despite these constraints, the project progressed due to Gaddafi's unwavering support. After that, the next phase, Phase 4, was planned to lay pipes from Jagbob to Tobruk and Gadarnis to northwest areas. Phase 5 included connecting these two networks. However, the planned four and five phases were not started yet when in 2011, the Great Man-Made River Project encountered significant setbacks due to the First Libyan Civil War. The overthrow and assassination of Gaddafi disrupted the project's funding and leadership. NATO airstrikes targeted the Brega pipe plant, essential for pipe production in later phases, under the guise of it being a military site a justification later found insufficient. This stopped further expansion. The following Second Libyan Civil War from 2014 to 2020 caused further neglect and dismantling of crucial infrastructure. By 2019, 101 of the 479 wells on the Western Pipeline were dismantled. In April 2020, armed militias seized a water station controlling the flow to Tripoli, showcasing the project's vulnerability and worsening the water crisis. The future of the Great Man-Made River Project depends on Libya's stability. If political stability and investment are achieved, the project could be completed and continue providing essential water resources. For now, it remains an unfinished vision. Today, Libya faces severe water shortages. The great man-made river project, once a marvel of engineering, is plagued by neglect and inadequate maintenance. The country that once thrived with this project is now struggling to manage its water resources. What do you think about this project? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.